Today I'm sharing three tips that have really helped me grow quicker on TikTok. So let's dive in. Hey, go getter. I'm Angela. And I'm Adam. We help normal moms and dads chase after their big dreams in a modern online world. All while in the midst of raising kids <laughs> in what we call the family hustle. So what I'm going to be sharing right now is actually some tips that you can use across any sort of platform, any sort of social media, even if it's not short 15 second videos. But obviously, if you've been paying attention and you listen to my last episode, I've been talking about how you probably want to pay attention of how you can develop the skill of using these 15 second videos because they're not going anywhere. TikTok obviously is what is really taken off recently, but Instagram just released Instagram reels. And so this type of content is not going anywhere. It is definitely what people prefer, something that's quick, something that's fast, something that gets to the point. And then it's a way to quickly warm up your audience to get them, you know, point them to an email list, point them to a freebie, point them to a podcast or something like that um, to get closer to you. But it's a really great way for you to quickly connect with people with these 15 second videos. And so that's the type of content that you might find on TikTok, on Instagram Reels, but I've been multi-purposing them, repurposing these contents on Pinterest as well. And they've been doing very well on Pinterest too. Um, Pinterest is also leaning more into video. And so that's something you wanna pay attention to. So let me tell you three different tips that have really helped me that I've learned in the past three uh, to four weeks that have really helped my videos get way more views um, and then also have grown my followers as well. So the first thing with TikTok is that the platform um, uses these 15 second type videos. Now you can go all the way up to 60 seconds, but most videos that do well are 15 seconds or less because the way that they track if a video does well is viewers, like how long people are watching the whole video. So that if you can get them to watch the complete video, then they'll show it to more people. So obviously shorter videos do best. So I was on this platform, I was having fun, it's very addictive, but then the, the thing that a lot of people do is they do these, a lot of people do these fun dances. Well, I can't dance, you know, I've never been coordinated in any sort of way. And so I knew that that was not something that was gonna work well for me because I'm not gonna attract a whole bunch of people for my smooth dance moves. So then that's like, okay, well then the other type of content that is very popular are these um, lip syncing type, videos. So you may use somebody's audio where they have just been talking or it's lip singing to songs, you know, all of these different things. But again, this isn't original content. So if you're a creator and you're thinking, I want to build my brand, I want to build my influence, I want to build my following, this is, both of these are not really the type of content you want to be making. But I wasn't seeing a lot of people in my space doing videos, doing things like this. And so I was thinking, how do I do this? How do I do health and wellness, um, inspirational, motivational stuff on TikTok? And so it kind of took me a little while to get into my groove. I thought that the lip syncing was fun and they were funny. Um, I'm just not that funny apparently. And so people weren't finding what I was doing that funny. And so what I changed is I changed to educational content. Now, this is something that I hear from so many coaches that the fastest way to build influence is through educational content. So thinking about, you know, and that's why I love my podcast, my blog, and it's, it's a place where I can show up and help people and educate them and maybe teach them something. But on TikTok or now Instagram Reels, how do you do this in 15 second videos? And so that's what I'm sharing today. So a lot of my educational content is like how to content, but ed educational content can also just be um, a, an inspirational story or a motivational thing, or just a new way of looking at something like, Hey, did you ever uh, check this video? Have you ever thought about it this way? Um, you know, and so you can think about educational content is different. And so I'm going to tell you a little bit of how I've been doing it in a health and wellness space and how I really kind of honed into that uh, health and wellness arena. Whereas before I was kind of like generally talking about like mom life and things like that. But then I realized that's not really me. I mean, yes, I'm a mom. I'm, but even deeper than that, I just want to be a healthy mom and I want to help other women be healthy. And so why am I not sharing about health and wellness? And so that's when I really like had a wake up call, I guess. I was like, I'm going to focus on healthy tips, healthy recipes, things like that. And, um, and so that's what I've been doing. And so in that educational space on TikTok, 
um, what does that look like? And so I've been doing how-to videos. I've been doing healthy tips. Um, I, I shared a few like uh, before and after pictures with my pantry, like updated pantry. Um, again, make sure that wherever you are, you have a lead magnet or something like that that you're pointing people to to get connected on your email list. Or if you don't have that yet, get them connected to it in a Facebook group. But you always wanna have a place that you can point people that's not another social media place. Like you don't wanna point people from uh, TikTok to Instagram to Facebook, because then they're just like following you all over the place. If they're, if they're already following you in one place, the next place you wanna get them closer to you would be either a Facebook group or even better, your email list. And so think about like a lead magnet, and I'm gonna be talking about that in the next episode, some different lead magnets that you can create even if you're just getting started. So I've been focusing on health and wellness and healthy tips. Now I heard somebody else share that you can think of a, your content as a funnel too. And obviously we talk, we've talked about funnels and funneling people in, but you can think about your content. So the, what, what is like the biggest like general Thing that you could talk about that would attract people to you. And so I was thinking about like healthy kitchen tips or even just kitchen tips. So I started sharing some like cool kitchen gadgets and things like that. Um, and so that those did fairly well. Those videos did fairly well. And so then the next thing that I was starting to think about is like, okay, so I healthy tips. So we'll think about like how to get better sleep, how to do X, Y, Z. What about a healthy like kitchen tips? So like uh, how to cut a watermelon, you know, things like that. Like things about like a healthy mom is going to eat fresh food, right? Or wants to eat fresh food. So let's talk about like kitchen tips, fresh food, things like that. And then the next thing was recipes. So again, you can go from like a broad topic and then you can like kind of funnel people through. Now, if they're following you because of your big broad topics, then they may see some of your other topics and get more interested. But obviously you're attracting the most people by those big broad topics. Now I saw some other people who were very popular on TikTok and they may have started a couple months before me, um, but their big broad topic is just mom life, mom humor, things like that. But then they start talking about like, what's a specific thing? Like uh, I'm a toddler mom, you know? And so then, then they talk about like toddler activities and things like that. And they're funneling their people in to a specific thing. Or like if you're talking about uh, beauty tips or things like that, you can talk about like mom life and then it's like busy mom, like, you know, things like that, like busy mom tips and then like busy mom skincare. So you, it, this works in any sort of uh, brand, personal brand, any sort of thing. You can think about what is my identity? Who am I really trying to help? And let's, let's maybe funnel that up and then funnel that back down. Like what's the broadest topic? And then what's, how do I niche down? So that's what has been working for me. So I've had a lot of videos, several over the last month that have gotten over 70,000 views on TikTok. And for me, that's a lot. I know some people, um, you know, that's not a lot for them. Um, but for me and for, uh, I hope you're not hearing my tummy rumbling. Um, and for me, you know, that's a lot. And so I've gotten several videos that have gotten that much, that have gotten 70,000. And then I've gotten several that have been 10,000, which even that's a lot for me across my social media platforms. And so thinking about how do you funnel people in? What is your broad topic? And then how do you get them to, you know, I want to help moms eat less sugar. So I share a lot of things like that, but maybe that's not the biggest topic that I'm going to be talking about, maybe the biggest topic is just general, healthy, whole foods, you know, and how to roast vegetables and things like that, and then narrowing it down to how do we eat less sugar. And so thinking about that, that may help you think about your content and your brand, what's like the big, broad videos that you can do that kind of appeal to a lot of people, and then you can niche down from there. And so again, what I really did is I changed the content I was doing to educational. And then I really thought about these buckets. You know, I can talk about my buckets as in like healthy mom, you know, and then like, you know, healthy eating, healthy food, um, and healthy mom kind of encom encompasses like healthy kids and things like that. So I do share like, um, recipes that I fix for my kids, um, and then just staying active and things like that. Um, and so thinking about your buckets and what are you going to talk about in those buckets? 
So thinking about that, you have to do my free five day launch your authentic brand challenge. So in that I have worksheets all put together to help you discover what your brand can look like, what your buckets are. And it really is a way for you to start thinking about, you know, your brand and how you want to show up and help people the most and who you can help just as your gift, you know, to the world. And so if you haven't grabbed that yet, it's in the show notes. Thanks for listening to The Family Hustle with Angela and Adam Parker. We appreciate you guys being here. If you're listening, don't forget to take a screenshot and share it into your stories and tag us at Grassfed Mama. Also, don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review on your podcast player of choice. That helps other people find out about what we're doing and it's the best thing you can do to help us grow the podcast. Hey, goal getter, are you ready to stop having to chase after people only to realize they aren't even interested in what you have to offer? You spend months trying to build rapport and get to know them, and then they never seem interested in buying. What if you could attract your ideal customer to you and have them reaching out for more information about your business and what you have to offer? If this sounds like something you want more info on how you can put into practice, join our Attraction Marketing Bootcamp, where we take five days to dig deep into discovering what your ideal customer wants and how you can be the most attractive to them through branding and developing a customer journey. Over the five days, you'll have worksheets and videos to guide you through this self-study. To learn more, head on over to grassfedmama.com slash attraction marketing. And now back to the show.